So had, had you set your spiritual intention at number one to let go of any, any addiction? So this is what I do, is to ask yourself if um, that you're willing to place spiritual intention above addiction. Now, some people use spirituality as a way to uh, use spirituality as a patch up because they end up in pain because of the addiction, but it's not a number one. So it's like, I was a food addict, so it would be like symbolically, I would, I, I'd want to, I'd love the payoff or the high of uh, eating donuts, but then I'd have suffering and pain afterwards. So I do a bit of spirituality, prayer, meditation, just to feel a little bit better, but then I'd be still wanting, because my number one unconscious intention is still to try and get my fix, my hit, from donuts. So I just keep going for the donuts as a number one, and then I use the spirituality as a patch-up plaster just to feel a little bit better before and after. Mm -hmm. So really, my unconscious intention is still donuts are my number one priority, and spirituality is a way to try and still get some kind of hit or payoff from the donuts, and just use spirituality as a, just a, a softening tool. So when you so what I'd recommend is be is to try and get conscious and unconscious and spiritual alignment 100% that your spiritual practice and be, having freedom from spiritual from the addiction is not is 100% uh, in congruence. First of all, I would write down on a piece of paper. Yeah, number one, that spiritual freedom is the number one priority in my life. And I will put the actions in throughout every day that demonstrate in the day that this was my number one uh, intention. And that is demonstrated by the actions I've taken in the day. What does that mean? If I spent like four hours in the day on the internet looking up donut shops, and 10 minutes in the day doing my spiritual practice. At the end of the day, really, my number one intention that was running my day was donuts. Not, and really, hmm. what was really winning out in the day for 10 minutes was prioritizing my spiritual practice. So really, that you're setting it consciously, write it down. Number one is my intention is to be free from all addictions, all bondages, all external projections that something outside of myself can fix me. So you write it down, and then the next thing is to make a commitment that is clearly demonstrative that my actions throughout the day are in alignment with my spiritual intention. So at the end of the day, you can have like a, a little, a little check-in with yourself to see whether my morning intention of putting spirituality first matched what happened throughout the day through the level of my actions. Now, here is the thing that I recommend in terms of actions, because it's one thing verbally saying it, but we want to put our actions where our mouth is and our intention is set. So we're consciously setting it, but of course the unconscious and addiction is a formidable, uh, a formidable foe. So it will try and overtake that throughout the day. So we want to also have an intention of spiritual practice throughout the day, and this must be a number one. Now the ego, when you make something like, if I'm going to say like every hour I'm going to have a reminder on my watch or my phone or by email to do my spiritual practice throughout the day, if I set this and I'm now saying this is my number one priority, the ego will immediately come up with a number of ifs, buts, and I can't do it in these situations. That's normal. Now. Here's the funny thing, which I think anyone in addiction will know. Like, if you are in addiction, you'll find a way to creatively get your addiction, no matter what. You'll find a solution. You'll spend hundreds of hours and find a way to do it and get it. Now, if spirituality is your number one intention of the day, no ifs, no buts, then this absolute creativity can be used to find a way to do your spiritual practice, no ifs, no buts, no excuses, uh, and, and you know things like work, things like relationships, relatives, you'll find a way to still do your practice 
And there are ways. You know, you can have, like I was sharing, I can have like a watch that beeps for me in the hour. I could find a, 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 vibrate, a vibrate tool on my phone that could vibrate in my pocket every hour. I could find, um, if I looked on all the apps available on the app stores, I could probably find something that would just make a flash on my phone every hour. I know that there are email providers where you can like have an email sent to you on the hour. You know, so you could, you'd have an email pop in. Or probably there's a text thing or, or a Facebook thing or a Twitter thing. So you could have multiple ways of creativity, creatively getting getting reminders where people wouldn't even notice that you're getting reminders. If you were like, if that was your number one priority, it was life and death, that you found a way, you'd find a way. So these ifs and buts are just your ego trying to derail your spiritual practice so that it can prioritize something else because it will derail it. You know, but again, just like there was the infinite creativity to get an addiction, there should be like, if, as you're starting to set your spiritual, I want to be 100% free of my bondage, my addiction, then it's like you want to have that same level of ferocity. And, you know, no, my intention today is to make my spiritual practice, to do it no matter what, and if I'm not doing it, to find an infinitely creative way so I'm able to do it. <clears throat> and actually, if you use that creativity in that way, very soon, if you maintain your intention every day to do it, you will be doing it. Now, that is not, is that easy? Probably not easy. But we're talking about um, first consciously setting it, then having it. Like I would recommend to anyone uh, who's listening to have like hourly reminders throughout the day. Hourly reminders. Find something, and okay, if you if you don't do it perfectly the first day, you might be finding more creative solutions to do it. But you know, over a period of a few days or weeks, there should be a creative solution so that you should be hitting those hours very regularly at least 90, 90, over 90% 90 of the time. And it's, why aren't you hitting it 90 to 100%? It's just because of ego excuses. You know, oh, my, yeah, I'll get fired, my boss will... But you can find solutions to that. The practice I would do is to do either one of a few things. You could do a, the lessons from A Course in Miracles on the hour, or I would also mix it with the observer. Go to the detached observing of your thoughts and feelings. That should only take like two seconds. Doing the course lesson should take about two seconds. Um, you know, if you've got more time, you can sit and feel your feelings. But literally, you should be even able to, after you're doing it every hour, still be in a conversation with someone and your pocket vibrates. And even while you're in conversation, you could have just done your lesson silently in your head and gone to the observer of the situation in one second and no one would notice because you've been doing it so regularly and so often. If you keep doing it, like I've been doing it for years, you'll find that unconsciously every hour, even without the alarm, something within you will ask you to just shake off your illusions because you've been committed for so long that it'll start to become an automatic process of letting go of your ego being the dominant force throughout the day. So when you set a number one intention, and you know, like in my story where I was taken to death with my addictions and had a spiritual experience, there was absolute willingness that, you know, getting freedom spiritually was going to be the number one thing in my life, and it has been for many, many years. That's the fastest way to become free and happy. If, you, if your spiritual intention, if your intention is addictive as a number one in your day, what could take a short, much shorter period of time will take you much, much longer. You know, what could take... I can't, I can't put a time scale, but let's say a hundred, it would probably take a hundred times longer if your intention is number two, spirituality is number two, or it's a patch-up job, while uh, your addiction and the projections and the magical specialness you're projecting is a number one. It's going to take a lot, lot longer. You still will get relief, but um, my thing is, once you get, you know, I think... I mean, I'm not saying anything for anyone. Any, everyone's free to do whatever they want in their life. But I'm saying, when you make spirituality your number one intention, if you make freedom, you know, that's the quickest and easiest way. Because when you have ambiguity or you're in conflict about something, you know, like if I said, like, 
put this on. Like in one hour, on the hour, I'm going to do my spiritual practice. If I have no conflict about it, it's usually quite easy. You know, I'll find a way of doing it quietly, even if I'm in a room of people. That's quite easy. But if I'm if I allow conflict into it, like no, if I'm in a room of people, I can't do it. Or if I'm on a date, I can't do it. Or if uh, if the football's on, I can't do it. Then there's always going to be a fight. Oh, you know, and then it's going to be much harder, you know, uh, to to keep doing it. And so the ego will be in number one place for huge chunks of the day. So it's going to take a lot longer before spirituality can make an impact when it's number two. Um, so that w that is my my view, and I, I think um, I just share from my experience. When spirituality is number one, things become a lot easier and clearer. When and I have had that experience for many years. So that's the easy way. And I speak to people who are in conflict. And when you're in conflict, it's because spirituality is number two or three on your agenda. And so things are much more difficult um, and uh, slower and more painful. So uh, that's my experience.